Okay. Is this my mic? Okay, it's working. First off, before I start talking, I just really want to thank you, that volunteer who brought me tea in the green room. Just thank you. Can you clap for him, please? Like, thank you. And off. Okay. Practicing my drum major skills. Anyways, so I'll be honest. Being up here is a bit intimidating because so many people have stood on the stage giving so many great speeches before me. But what is inspiring me to be up here is one of my greatest role models, Emma Watson, who once said to the UN, if not now, when? If not now, like if not me, who? So that's why I'm up here, is because I have so many inspiring people in my life and I hope that I can inspire you. So first off, I'm Sophie, hi. I'm a sophomore at, in high school. Anywho, enough about me. <laughs> when I was in science class the other day, I was sitting at my desk doing my work, and someone looked at me straight in the eye and said, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a girl. And I'm just thinking, what? Like, that's kind of dehumanizing, don't you think? Like, what does that mean? And they looked me directly in the eye as they said it, so they, I knew they, they were talking to me. So while you think about that, here's another story. When I was seven years old, I was playing basketball with one of my friends, and he looked at me after we are done playing and said, Sophie, you are the most boyish girl I have ever met. Now, I really don't know what caused him to say that. I mean, was it the fact that I wore more pants than skirts and dresses, or was it because my favorite colors are blue and green? I really don't, don't know. I mean, I'm not really planning on finding out, but that just kind of confused me for a second because, I mean, I wasn't trying to be what a boy is. I mean, by the time we turn three, we get a little present from our parents for our birthday saying, hey, we're gonna give you a kitchen and a little room so you can be like mommy. I mean, you wanna be like mommy, right? When we turn five, we are in kindergarten, and in kindergarten, there's a corner of the room, and the corner of the room is dress up. And during dress up, there's a bunch of pink and purple frilly dresses that we get to wear over our clothes, and we get to stand in a corner, and the corner is our castle, so to speak. And the castle's built up with bricks, and we're gonna have like our long hair flow over our shoulders and everything so the boys can save us. Those bricks, it's called society's expectations. When we turn eight, we find our mom's makeup kit, or maybe she shows us because we want to look beautiful and presentable to the outside world. And maybe we might get to put on some pink nail polish, and that's great. When we turn 12, we are equipped with the latest smartphone so we can take a bunch of hot selfies. So these selfies, selfies we get to take and post on social media, like that's the start of our liking career. Sorry. Um, when we turn 16 is when we have our sweet 16. And at our sweet 16, we get to go out shopping with lots of money, and we get to buy a lot of clothes and new eye makeup just to complete the look. We post a picture on social media, and we get 54 likes. That's so great. And look, he commented on it, and he said, sexy pic, show more next time. When we turn 20, or 21 more so, it's our 21st birthday and we're sitting in a bar with one of our friends and a guy slides over a drink and winks at us, just saying, hey, I think you're beautiful, so I'm gonna send you a drink. And I feel great because I feel attractive, I feel cute, I feel needed because of that. Now, after that, when we turn 30, like nine years down the road, we are doing great in life. I mean, we made it this far three decades, um, but it's a little too old to start being a mom. I mean, our daughter should be turning three. And guess what? For her third birthday, we got her a small kitchen set with a little broom so she can be just like mom. Now, take in this quote for a second. I mean, these limits that I was talking about, that's exactly how society views us. I mean, they tell us that we need to be these people, I mean, with long, luscious locks and hair, hair and wear skirts and dresses. I mean, personally, I hate skirts and dresses. I just can't deal with them. And I can't curl my hair, obviously. <laughs> but that's the thing, is that they expect us to be these women and girls who look a certain way, who be a certain way. And... This isn't really supposed how it's supposed to be. It's, it's not who we are. I mean, when we turn three, we should be given a hammer and say it fixes things. And when it fixes things, great things can happen. And then when we turn five, we can be the princess or the prince. I mean, I always wanted to be the prince because I feel like I can save myself. But hey, princesses can save themselves too. Why not? And then when we turn eight, 
you can tell him, hey, you look beautiful too, but also let him know that you don't have to wear makeup to look pretty. You don't have to tell her to wear makeup to look pretty. When they turn 16, tell them that smiling and comfy clothes, like whatever you're comfortable in, is great, greater than anything you can wear. I mean, I'm comfortable today, so. And then when they turn 20, congratulate him on getting his nursing degree. When she turns 27 or so, tell her congratulations on getting her doctorate. When they turn 30, congratulate them on getting this far. I mean, that's pretty great that you made three decades. And so, uh, as you can probably see, like the machine that they're building, like society is building a machine based on what's going on in our lives, like all the makeup tutorials that girls need to watch, all the how to get muscles, like what boys need to watch, it all gets into a machine and soon it's gonna bust and you know what? Right now is when I'm busting that machine. I'm going to bust this machine we call it society and make a new machine. We can make a new machine from the girls with hammers and compo compound miter saws that felt like they couldn't do it because it was a boy thing. We're going to take the girls and the boys with high GPAs and who have a lot of knowledge to how we can build this and how we can make our world better. We can take all of the girls who can sew from, and we can take blankets and make them out of the boxing gloves and the basketball jerseys that girls had, but they couldn't really feel like they could fit in by doing those things. But we also need the girls and boys who have a who have 2,322 followers so we can get our message across that we need to change the world and we need to do it right now. The reason why we always talk about change is because it is now. Change is going to happen. And it is okay for it to happen. I mean, to be a successful society and world, we need to realize that gender-specified things aren't working for us. I mean, you don't have to be a girl to go into fashion design or go into being a model. You don't need to be a boy to be a doctor or CEO. Actually, we need more people of integrated careers like that. I mean, we need successful women who are CEOs and doctors and presidents and like presidents of company CEO. You get the point. But <laughs> we also need um, men who aren't afraid to model. We, we need them to show that it doesn't matter who you are. Just live your dream. But to let them know that they're accepted, we need to accept it within ourselves. We need to accept who we are as a person. And to do that, we need to have an accepting community. To have the accepting community, like I said, it all starts in ourselves. We start with the people around us and that just keeps on building, like social media. Anywho, back on the farm, as I should say. Um, having non-gender specified things will help us realize that we are all important and that we can all do what we want to do. I mean, if we have non-gender specified things, girls will go up to be the next Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson, Dr. Stephen Hawking. Boys will go up to be the next Emma Watson, then Malala Yousafzai. And that's just great because having non-gender specified things of not just feminine and not just masculine will help our society succeed better. And I think some people might think, wait, I can't, but yes, you can. You can accept it by, you can start by accepting yourself, accepting those around you, and just realizing it's who we are that makes us human, and that is empowering. And with this change, not only can we, but we definitely will. Thanks. <laughs> also, okay, one quick thing. My parents have advised me, advised me not to do this, but I'm going to do it anyways. I love you! <laughs> Thank you.